Welcome, everyone. We always like to start just a, a few seconds early so that we can uh, let everyone hop on and, and get started. We will start promptly in about 30 to 45 seconds. Um, but we, it's, it's great to see you, Austin, Avelia. This is going to be a good one. We, we had a little bit of conversation before it started. And uh, there's, some, there's some great changes happening in this space. And uh, we're all looking for opportunities to to improve both the uh, PVR and the customer experience in the finance portion of the process, however you do it. And so I think this is going to, this is going to be handy. Um, let's go ahead and kick this off. Welcome. Uh, I'm Bart Wilson. I'm going to just kind of be lurking on this. Uh, Michael's going to be doing most of the presentation. We'll introduce him in a second. Before we do, uh, I want to once again, thank you for hopping on and have two cup, uh, just two housekeeping items. First of all, if you are busy in the middle of this, or there's something that you really want to replay again, or or play with someone else in your in your dealership. Uh, the recording will be sent out after this is over, so you will be able to access the recording. Uh, just wait for that email to come through, and um, you know we'd like to think that you're glued to the screen the whole time, but we know that you know you might have a deal or something might come up. Uh, in addition to that, it, we're using Zoom for this, so if you hover over your lower uh, part of your screen, you'll see a chat window. I will be monitoring and watching that chat throughout the presentation. So please feel free to, to put some comments in there, some questions. Uh, we would love to talk more about that. And that's really all I have. Uh, without further ado, Michael, why don't you introduce yourself? Let's kick this off. Thanks, Bart. I want to thank Driving Sales for hosting this webinar as well. We're, we're excited to talk about NextGen F&I and um, the opportunity that is automotive PNC insurance in, in the automotive space. So uh, to Bart's point with comments and questions, by all means, please, please add those in. And, and Bart, if it's pertinent to the slide that I'm on, um, I think we can we can stop. And I think the more interactive this is, the more we'll all get out of this. So that would be great. We'll also save some time at the end for, for Q&A. So just as a quick introduction, my name is Michael Kenton. I'm the Vice President of Dealer Solutions for Dealer Policy. Uh, I've got about 20 years automotive insurance experience. I, I cut my teeth at Enterprise Holdings, managing the Northeast operations for Enterprise Alamo, National, Exotic, and Car Sharing. And for the last five years, I've been on this rocket ship journey with with dealer policy creating the category that is automotive insurance uh in the in the dealership car buying journey so i'm excited to talk with you all today about that uh and so we'll we'll, we'll jump right in here right so um this is bought in your car dealerships every single day 100 of car buyers are buying insurance but you don't benefit or profit from it at all um, I think that's initially what got me most excited about joining the dealer policy team. And I think it, from, a, from a retail perspective, as you think about that, um, it's significant missed opportunity. And we've developed a way, there are multiple ways, but dealer policy has also developed a way to incorporate this as part of the process. And so what we want to do today is we want to take you through what your different options are, how, how you can possibly engage in auto insurance in the automotive space. And then start to talk about what the solutions are around that, right? So let's let's jump right in. So, so car shoppers today, they believe that this is inseparable, that auto insurance belongs as part of the automotive car buying experience. In fact, 72% of car buyers consider this when they're making their purchase, right? This is one of life's big purchases and auto insurance comes along with that. So if they purchase XYZ new vehicle, how is this going to impact their monthly premiums? Is this going to make the car more affordable, less affordable? Um, the, the products that are offered in the business office, does this put them in the realm of possibility or potentially make them too expensive to afford, right? Um, and so about 45% per cust of customers are factoring that cost into the vehicle decision, right? So we want to make sure that we're taking advantage of that, and helping the consumer through the process. So what we find or what I find most surprising or what, what was most surprising to me when I got into this space, about 80% of Americans, 80% of us on the call today are overpaying for insurance. Carriers tend to acquire you at an inexpensive rate and your premiums will slightly gradually increase over time. Um, and that creates a significant opportunity for a car shopping customer as they're making a change to their insurance to cover their new vehicle purchase, right? Um, to potentially shop other carriers so that they can A, have the best coverage for them, but also 
reduce the overall cost of insurance, their monthly total car expenses, right? Um, so, you know, about 71% of customers today, even though 80% are overpaying, will just make a swap, right? They'll take the old vehicle off the policy and they'll put the new vehicle on. That's going to cause a number of things to happen potentially where premiums go up, the cost of insurance goes up. Uh, these carriers and agencies may offer your customers gap insurance, mechanical breakdown coverage, or financing. And we know from an automotive retail perspective, we don't, we don't want that, right? We can't have that. We need to protect our bottom lines, the gross and the business office gross. So we'll get in more to how we can help solve for that. Um, so what do customers really want? They, they, they want a seamless solution. They want something that's built into the car buying journey. Um, they want mobile solutions. And they want to be able to have a digital experience overall, right? So the industry's changed quite a bit from your, your standard independent agent where you'll call and speak to somebody, they'll walk you through a number of different things. Consumers today want to be able to digitally attain a number of different quotes, not just one captive quote, but a number of quotes from competing insurance carriers. So I think it's really important as we start to talk about the options that you have as an automotive dealer, what, what solutions they'll provide for you and what solutions they'll provide for your customers to ultimately create this seamless, smooth uh, insurance and car buying experience that's that's complete end to end, right? It, it covers the car buying process, it covers F&I solutions, but it also covers the other aspects of vehicle ownership like auto insurance. Um, so dealers today and F&I managers can really benefit from this. And I think, you know, to slow down for a second and talk about this, every single customer, as I mentioned before, they're gonna purchase auto insurance or they're gonna make a change to their policy. Um, we did a survey a few years ago with a thousand car buying customers throughout the U.S. These were not dealer policy customers. These were just automotive customers in the market to buy a car and buy insurance. What I found most interesting is 64% of customers said that if they were to save money in that seamless process, in the retail process, in the car dealership, they would spend that on a higher trim level or they'd spend that on other ancillary products in the business office. So if you think about that, Today, a lot of customers make their way to the business office and they could be maxed out on payment, especially with today's inventory and just general pricing of vehicles, right? Lack of incentives. So this gives them the ability to save money, create more buying power. And they're, the majority of consumers are open to spending more. Uh, on the right-hand side of my screen, you're gonna see you know, what we consider the real proof of this. So we work with our car dealerships um, to analyze their data, customers that go through dealer policy, save money in auto insurance, and then go into the business office. How is that different than customers that don't go through the process? Um, over about 80,000 transactions or so, we're seeing a $538 lift or 44% increase for customers that buy insurance and save money through dealer policy who then go into the business office. So about $538 per copy stronger in gross. So right now that now it really be, sort of becomes a no brainer, you can create a more total consumer experience, but you can also leverage those savings to capture more gross in your process. So as we analyze how customers want to buy insurance and, and why it fits, I think it's important now to sort of transition to the options that you have as an automotive retailer. What's the next step? What should you be thinking of? What should you be looking at? what solution best fits you and your organization. So we're gonna dive into a number of different options here and, and we're gonna start with just a general overview of all the different options you have. So number one, you, you can refer local agents. And I think this is what happens most frequently today. There's a number of customers every month that can't find the right insurance for themselves. Um, your salespeople on the sales floor are referring them to a local independent agency. Maybe they're referring Geico. Um, but very limited options there, not a lot of control, and, and we'll get into more detail around that in just a minute. Um, you also have the opportunity to, to set up your own captive agency. So examples of that might be Allstate or Farmers. Um, number three, you, you could build your own independent agency. You could create an entity, get licensed, you know, um, attain your carrier appointments, and run your own brick and mortar independent agency for your dealership. Uh, and number four is, is, is really new. Dealer policy, I think, brought this to the scene and there's some other options out there. Um, but that is a scalable digital platform that gives you the ability to really plug and play a seamless solution without all of the, the effort and expense that goes into creating an entirely new business for your dealership. So let's jump into some of those options, right? And what they look like. So when you look at referring local agents and, and on this grid, we're going to measure 
opportunity on the left and just general ease of entry. How quickly and easily can we get into this and start taking advantage of the fact that every consumer is going to make an insurance decision in your showroom, right? So referring a local agent, it's really easy to get into. Pick up the phone, call your local agent. Um, but what's the opportunity there? What do you really get out of that? So you're, you're likely going to be able to find insurance for your consumer. If that's hindering them from being able to close a car deal because they can't find it, you're obviously going to be able to close that car deal. The customer is not necessarily going to get transparency with pricing. They're not nice, necessarily going to save any money. And the local agents or Geico's of the world are not necessarily going to be able to communicate those savings to you in a way that you can add it into your process, that you can monetize that, right? Um, there's no income streams from this whatsoever. And, and, and what concerns me the most is the dealership is, is not necessarily in control of the process. It's a simple handoff. And now the customer is with a third party that may offer gap insurance, may offer mechanical breakdown coverage or financing, and that could really cause some issues in the dealership. So it is an easy option, but it provides very low opportunity. Next would be setting up a captive agency um, in your showroom. Again, I mentioned Allstate uh, Farmers has a program, uh, and there may be some others out there. And so it's almost the inverse, right? So it, it's, it's much more difficult to get into this. Um, there's high expense associated with it. Um, and, and there's really low opportunity because of the lack of um, digital solution, right? There's not, a, there's not a seamless digital solution here. It's a very antiquated process, in my opinion. Um, and that leads to really low conversion, right? Or low penetration with customers. Um, some of the things to think about would be just the overall cost of entry. Um, most of these organizations will require licensing. Um, you'll have to create an entity, a, a licensed insurance entity in, in the respective state or states where you operate. Um, really to optimize this, if you're an auto group and you have multiple rooftops, to best utilize this, you'll have to have multiple brick and mortar locations. Um, each location will require signage, branding, you know, general brick and mortar expense. But there's a lot of SG&A expense associated to that as well. So you'll have to have an agency manager, licensed sub producers, and customer service representatives to manage that book of business as, as time goes on. And if you're to duplicate this in a number of rooftops, uh, that can become quite costly. You also have, or, or, or you're stuck on capacity, right? So we know we're selling more vehicles on a Friday and Saturday than we are on a Tuesday. The challenge becomes staffing yourself for Saturday to, to handle all of your, your, your car buying customers in a very consistent manner. But what do you do with that staff on Tuesday when volume significantly changes, right? So you are somewhat limited in that aspect unless you really ramp up your capacity, which comes with an exceptional expense. Third is, is, is building your own independent agency. Um, and this can be a good option for dealerships. I think it does sort of shift your focus from selling cars and selling back-end products to now managing and operating an insurance agency. Um, the, the, the cost is not so expensive, uh, but you still need to carry a lot of the same employees to run that agency. So you'll have agency managers, um, licensed producers, as well as customer service representatives to manage that book of business. Um, I think where the opportunity becomes really high here is you own that book of business, you own that asset. Um, I think the challenge still comes into play where you don't have a digital solution. So it's very difficult to get all of your consumers in front of competitive quotes, um, which could lead to lower penetration. I think that technology play is really what moves you into that upper right-hand quadrant of, 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 this, of this grid here. Uh, and I think that's what a, a digital solution can really do. So where you own the book of business, you own the asset, that's great. Um, but I often say, you know, 100% of nothing's nothing, right? If, if you can't capture all of your car buying customers in a really consistent way, you know, you may end up in sort of a discriminatory setting where you can't service all customers in an equal way. You can't communicate those savings back to your sales team because of the process. And that could limit some of the opportunity there, but it is a much easier point of entry um, than a captive model. Um, and, and I think one thing to consider here too is 
you have to gain carrier appointments. You have to get that appetite from the local carriers to want to do business with your agency. And that can sort of be a daunting ramp up, ramp up for anybody interested in, in starting their own independent agency. Um, so last is, is really a, a scalable digital platform, one that is exceptionally easy to plug and play into your dealership. Um, a technology that lives at the point of sale where the customers are making the decisions to do so, um, but also one that has unlimited capacity, capacity to deal with all of your customers working your hours, right? Eight to eight, eight to nine, eight to 10, any given business day. So all of your customers can be supported the same way, but also in a way that you can provide choice and transparency to that customer. So they feel good about the interaction there's likely savings to be had. And that digital solution should be able to play back the savings and the overall experience and ultimately um, lift your CSI, help you lift your overall dealership retail gro gross revenue uh, and create an entirely new income stream, similar to what the other uh, captive models or independent models will do, but without the expense. These scalable digital models don't have a lot of expense to them. In fact, dealer policy, uh, to speak of one, we don't charge our dealerships. This is a true partnership. If we can embed a solution in your customer buying journey that doesn't cost anything, that's mutually beneficial for dealer policy and your dealership, you can really see great levels of success there. So um, what are we looking for, right? Adding auto insurance to your process. What to look for when you're considering a digital auto insurance solution. I think this is the most logical step for us to go into next. Uh, and so we'll, we'll dive right into this. Um, for, for maximum customer benefit, uh, you really want a streamlined digital solution, right? So this is that upper right-hand quadrant, something that you can embed in your customer buying journey that's seamless and integrated for all customers. Um, something that, that doesn't break your overall customer buying journey or process. Um, you know, one thing we know at dealer policy is that um, process for a dealership is, is paramount, right? We, we're trying to reduce the amount of transaction time. Digital retailing is becoming more and more or closer and closer to the forefront of a transaction. So how, do, how can this fit in? How can we capture all of these customers? Well, you embed a digital solution um, right at the point of sale, one that provides quotes, competitive quoting to a customer in real time. Um, one that gives you an opportunity to either speak to a licensed agent, which a lot of customers want to do, uh, or, or an option to directly buy insurance online without an agent at any point in time throughout the course of a day. Uh, you know, if it's 11 o'clock at night on a, on a Tuesday and you're trying to spot a deal, do you have a solution that's going to be able to provide you a binder for that customer and also provide that customer savings and more value, right? Uh, and again, it needs to be done in, in, in just minutes. It needs to be something that can be either done mobily on a mobile device, on a tablet, as most dealers are starting to move to tablets for their transactions, or a desktop version, right? Something that's totally universal in, in any car buying journey. Um, you need to make sure that you have choice. I think this is really one of the most important functions or, or features for your consumers as you're thinking about CSI, as you're thinking about total consumer buying power and providing the most value to your customers. If you, if you went with a captive program, you're, you're likely going to have just that one carrier um, that, that has a different appetite for risk and may not be able to service all your customers alike. So by choosing an independent model or an independent uh, digital experience like dealer policy, you're going to be able to provide your consumers a number of different auto insurance quotes. That's going to ensure that they have the best possible price, that they, they save the most money, and they have the best con overall consumer buying experience. I would also make sure that you look for how it integrates into other steps of your process, other, other steps of the car buying journey. Um, we know that customers start looking for their vehicle and they start thinking about insurance long before they actually step into a dealership, right? So can we create, can a, can a company create awareness for you and for your consumers prior to, right, uh, on, on car gurus or cars.com or other digital retailing websites? Um, can they enter into the workflow immediately, um, whether it be at the point of sale really early on in the process? Um, can they be entered into the workflow in F&I uh, or post-sale? Um, when we think about F&I specifically, 
how can they integrate into the menu, the menu presentation, whether it's an interview process early on in the, in the F&I process, or when they're already in the F&I office and they're going through the different options they have to you know, purchase the additional peace of mind that they likely should have on the vehicle, you wanna make sure that that digital solution covers all of those different aspects of the transaction. Um, and we certainly wanna remind the customer of those savings um, in a menu presentation. So does this solution that you're considering cover this broad spectrum of, of F&I software in, in, in the overall car buying journey? Um, it's gonna work. It's gonna work when you do. Um, we understand that just because your dealership may close at 8 p.m., that doesn't mean that's when you're closing your doors. Um, you need a solution that's there Monday through Sunday, right? A solution that's working your same business hours and maybe even beyond that, right? And so that's where some of that direct bind functionality comes into play, where a consumer can buy insurance directly online um, without the involvement of a licensed insurance agent, right? And so there are programs out there like dealer policy that give you the ability to do that. You can kind of have the best of both worlds. And really, I think that plays in well to just overall CSI and your, your customer's experience when they're buying a car. And then on the flip side, it's giving you the ability to realize customer savings, additional consumer buying power so that you can leverage that to sell more cars or more, more products in the business office. Um, I, I sort of mentioned this before, but I think, you know, look for a full cycle integration to maximize general awareness, right? So again, customers start shopping long before they get into the dealership. They make their way to your dealership's website. So can the solution that you're considering integrate with your website? Can we draw our attention to consumers and potentially funnel leads to you? Uh, as you would hope a true partner would be able to, you know, so can your insurance option, the, the option you're considering, do that for your business? Can it drive more awareness and create more quality leads for your dealership? And again, you know, the point of sale we've found anyways, to be um, the best area to penetrate the customer. That, that's where they're making the decision after the deal's structured, they're ensuring that vehicle or ensuring it's covered before financing is really taken care of. But you have the post-sale, Right. And so does the solution really go beyond and continue to cover you post sale as well so that you can continue to provide value in, in ultimately higher retention? Right. I think that's a goal of, of, of all of us as, as, as automotive retail professionals is not just create a, a, a seamless um, and exceptional car buying experience, but we want to retain that customer. We want them to come back. We want them to buy their second, third vehicle. We want their kids and family members to buy vehicles from the same dealership. So this solution should really go as far to create stickiness um, in the total car buying journey and ultimately bring customers back to you when, when the time's right. So I got through this pretty quickly, uh, a little bit quicker than I thought, but wanted to share some uh, examples from some of our partners here. Um, we, we've got many dealers on the dealer policy platform, about 1,400 today. Um, a lot of our dealers are, are leveraging this, not just to create a better car buying experience or to create a new income stream through the sale of auto insurance, which we do and in, in many of these options will do for you, but we're really helping dealers um, generate more gross revenue in their business offices. And I think that's, that's exceptionally important. And so as you're thinking about uh, the options that you have and how far you want to go with this, you know, will it will it give you the ability to generate more gross revenue and support your core business, right? Will it create a new income stream? And is it measurable? And is it something that can be completely seamless in your solution so that it doesn't, um, you know, make the current car buying journey that you have today muddy, right? It, will it fit in seamlessly? Will it cover every aspect of the car buying journey? And will it provide value to you and your customers as well as your gross revenues? Um, so with that, Bart, I got through it really quickly. Um, have we had any questions come through? I've got some. Uh, I've, I've got some for you. And please, if you have any questions, feel free to 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 sign on. And I'm I'm a little bit ignorant when it comes to some of the the automotive insurance um, uh, elements that we're talking about here. So I'm going to sure. be playing the dumb guy. Uh, but before we do, uh, you know, there are a lot of, of dealerships that are incorporating some. I guess what I would call them non traditional F and I processes. I would love to see uh, from you. First of all, how how successful dealers are incorporating this part of the, this this finance, I mean this insurance portion, 
into the FNI process or the car process in general? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, you know, we, we do it a number of different ways. Um, most often sales folks in the dealership are, are entering consumers into our platform so that we can realize that savings in the retail buying journey as soon as possible. That gives you the ability to close a car deal if you otherwise couldn't because the customer's too far away on payment. But it also creates transparency, as you're alluding to, for the F&I office. And so we've built it into deal jackets. Um, we've built automated text messages that go to F&I managers that draw attention to consumer savings. And F&I managers have access to our, our portal so that they can see specifically what the customer has saved for auto insurance. But most recently in 2021, we've partnered with Darwin and other menu partners to really, A, make it available in the interview process for F&I managers but draw their attention and the consumer's attention to the, the amount of money they saved in the car dealership. And so this has given F&I managers the ability to create more value and, and really leverage that savings to, to, you know, rather than peel the customer off the ceiling, right? They now have this expanded financial bandwidth to sell more products because the customer has more spending power. Um, we have a number of dealerships that are sharing their data with us today and we work together as partners to really decipher between the consumers that buy insurance versus those that don't. And consistently with every dealership that we measure this with today, we're seeing a, over a $500 lift per copy for customers that buy insurance and, and save money on dealer policy. So, so you're, you're encouraging it the, to be just going back to my dealer days. I know, you know, you've got some experience with this, but um did the trial close, brought them in, we're getting ready to work payments. Um, is it is it there uh, because they're already maybe starting to fill out information or is it post when they're like, yeah, uh, I want to do X for 72 months. Um, then it gets brought up by the by the salesperson uh, as an opportunity to, to be a benefit there. Yeah, I think that's a great question, Bart. You know, process is, is so important and I think it varies slightly dealership to dealership. So, um, you know, we've seen the most success by really sort of customizing our process within each respective dealership. Um, but where a customer is already giving a lot of personal information to fill out a credit application and eventually have financing run for them, um, we find that to be the best place to collect the information that we need to generate quotes. And we have some seamless integrations that help us pull in some really helpful information like additional vehicles in a household, additional drivers in a household, that's inside a dealership wouldn't otherwise typically have. Um, but I think to your point, it lives, it lives well there. And when the customer speaks to an agent, that typically happens just before they go into F&I. So I know traditionally in most dealerships across the country, um, there's some lag time, there's some wait for the F&I office. And so we help to really capture the customer's attention during that period of time fill it with value, give them the opportunity to save. And we really leave just the leveraging the savings aspect for the F&I manager. So I think the further you push that down the funnel, um, the more difficult it is to leverage the opportunity. If it were to live just in the F&I office, um, for the customer to step out and have a 15 minute conversation with an agent or go through the digital journey, it could muddy that process a little bit. And then you have a lot of companies that will really focus post-sale, right? Customers already left the dealership. They've already made that buying decision. They're in their new vehicle. Um, customers don't buy insurance that way, right? So you'll see really low conversion if you, if you push this to the end of the sales process. Um, and I think ahead of um, helping customers spend more money in the business office, you can really leverage this to sell more cars. Uh, there's customers that are walking out of the showroom every day because they can't afford the payment uh, with less incentives due to inventory. Uh, that's probably happening more frequently. Now the consumer has more buying power to buy that vehicle if they otherwise couldn't. So earlier in the process, we find to be better. We want the dealership, every aspect of it, whether it's salesperson, sales manager, F&I manager, to have full awareness of where that customer is and what their budget is. Finance managers, finally some good news, right? It seems yeah, like the customers aren't really excited to go to that office. But if you've got a customer that just saved, you know, 50 bucks on, on insurance or whatever it is, they're, they're going to have a little lighter step when they walk into that office. That's kind of cool. You know, we sort of make the joke internally, but, um, you know, really sort of puts the eye back in F&I, right? There you go. It, it, there you go. Uh, you mentioned other, other vehicles in the household. I mean, I know <laughs> that, you know, it's no secret if you turn on any any college football game, you're going to get 27 different 
uh, insurance commercials, right? Uh, and everybody's talking bundling. What, how does that impact or how does that work? Is it possible with, with this? Absolutely. So dealer policy is a, is a full service um, insurance agency, you know, with a very um, detailed and, and seamless solution bolted onto it, right? And so what that really means is it, it, we have the ability to, to write any line of business that any other independent agency would have the opportunity to do. We really focus on the automotive insurance in the dealership, but binding all of the vehicles. And so that's why we, we integrate with a number of different providers in every given state so that we can provide that transparency and we can quote all of the vehicles in the household. But we also give the customers the ability to save on renters or homeowners or motorcycle or RV. And so for our automotive dealers, that's really important. One, bundling creates savings, right? So regardless of who your carrier is, you, you typically don't have um, separate carriers for separate different pieces, right? You, all, of, all of the pieces, as it's called in the insurance industry or homes, RVs, motorcycles, et cetera, are all bound by the same carrier. And that's because you receive different levels of discount for doing that. So the more pieces you have, the more discounts you get. Um, so it'll generate more consumer savings by bundling more pieces. Um, it's also going to give the dealership the ability to earn more on the back end, right? So, you know, rather than just receiving a commission on one monoline auto policy, you may have a bundled policy or you might have auto and home, right? And so that gives the dealership the ability to earn commission on all of the policies that that customer has. And I also think if you think about it from a retention perspective, if you can sell a customer a vehicle, you can sell a customer a warranty vehicle service contract, but you also sell them auto insurance and you're not selling that, right? Dealer policy insurance is selling the insurance, but from a perception perspective, they've gone to your dealership and they've got the vehicle, they've got the insurance that fits them best. They've got the F&I products that gives them the peace of mind they need. They're a lot more likely to come back to the dealership. And we see that in, in CSI scores. So, so it, what, this is going back to me being I I ignorant with, with some of these items. Um, so I, I get that it's going to improve the gross in the F&I department. Uh, is that the only way that the dealers can get a piece of this pie from, from the automotive insurance? No, absolutely not. You know, many of these programs give you the ability to participate in uh, commission revenue. Um, some of them are more difficult. You know, if you cannot get it in front of every single car buying customer, your overall policy sales by vehicle customers is going to be much lower. Dealer policy with a digital solution gives you the ability, obviously, to capture many more of those customers. And so what we do is we bring our dealerships on as partners. Um, they'll ultimately become licensed agents, and it gives them the ability to participate in the new business and renewal commissions that we earn from our carriers. And so, you know, for example, let's just say a 10 store auto group, you know, it's a multi-million dollar opportunity. And if you start to think about um, selling insurance to 20, 30% of your car buying customers, if, if gross revenues, you know, $500 stronger on those customers, you know, it's a 10, $20 million opportunity. That's really just being left on the table today. It's just purely missed opportunity. Um, so I think as, as dealers are thinking about those solutions, make sure it's a solution that gives you the ability to earn commissions. Um, that is really the most exciting part for me. You know, we share 50% of our renewals with our car dealers. It's, it's a, it's a pure partnership for us. Uh, and it gives our dealerships the ability to pick up millions of dollars of additional revenue that they wouldn't realize any other way. All right. Well, I appreciate this, Michael, and I appreciate everybody for hanging out for this. I, this, this is kind of uh, it's it's a it's an interesting and unique opportunity uh, for dealers to take advantage of in finance. It's uh, it's something that provides a lot of value and and could give cool. you a leg up as you as you're trying to generate more back end growth. So. Michael, thanks so much for, for hopping on and joining with us. Yeah, Bart, thank you so much. Driving sales, thank you. And um, it looks like uh, I do have a question from Austin. I apologize. It came in through the Q&A. Um, let's really quickly, if can we talk about, can we talk about some comp plans for these F&I managers? Uh, the question is, do you see dealers sharing or incentivizing F&I managers with commissions earned on renewals and new policies? And could that be part of the of the of the compensation? It absolutely could be. Um, it, it, in most cases, um, that tends to be the dealership benefit. Um, in order for anybody to be compensated on the sale of insurance, they'll have to become licensed. Many F and I uh, um, managers have licenses already. May already have a PNC license. 
So that would give the dealership the ability to share back. Um, we also see significant lift in, in F9 manager earnings simply through um, the lift and overall growth. So it absolutely can be done. Um, we, we do it with some of our providers or some of our dealer partners today. Um, it, it's something that we would we would certainly work out with your automotive group to, to make sure that the, the commission revenue sharing is, is set up appropriately for your for your dealership. And uh, I've got a question here from Christian. Um, is it available in Canada and Canada? Is it available in Canada or is this something that that you're strictly focusing on the U.S. market? So today we're, we're strictly focused on the U.S. market. Um, you know, I'd maybe remove the strictly focused piece. I, I think as we move into 2022 and 2023, we, we certainly realize how large the opportunity is in Canada. And we've worked with some other partners up there to really scope out that opportunity. And I, and I think Canada will, will certainly be the next frontier for us. Okay. Well, now I think, I think we're good. Thank you so much. Thanks for the questions, everyone. Uh, Michael, thanks for joining us. And we, and we, we hope to see you again. Thanks, Bart. Likewise. Thank you, Driving Sales. All right, everyone. Uh, until the next one, thank you for hopping on and, and we'll see you soon.